Hello and welcome. In this ANSYS how-to video, we will discuss the details of the curvature size controls in the local sizing task of the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow. So let's get started. The local sizing task allows us to gain better control over the sizing of the mesh elements by letting us define mesh size controls that operate on specific localized portions of the domain. The curvature setting, as the name suggests, is used for refining the local sizing based on the underlying curve or surface curvature. This control comes in handy especially in models having a combination of large and small scales. Let's learn about this size control in detail by getting our hands dirty with watertight geometry workflow in ANSYS Fluent Meshing. Let's start Fluent in meshing mode. Set the number of processes and the working directory accordingly. Once Fluent launches, select watertight workflow from the drop-down menu and import the provided geometry as shown here. This geometry consists of an enclosure around a PCB containing geometrically identical pairs of heat sinks and capacitors as shown here. Keep in mind that this is a representative geometry intended for instructional use only. Select yes for this question under add local sizing task. Now under size control type, select curvature you will notice that additional settings are added to the task. The curvature sizing requires four main parameters to be defined. Min and max sizes, growth rate, and the normal angle. The local min and max sizes allows us to specify the minimum and maximum sizes of the elements for the surface mesh respectively. Keep in mind that these sizes are measured tangential to the surface. The growth rate specifies the increase in element edge length with each succeeding layer. These settings prevent the mesh from becoming too fine or too coarse on the scoped surfaces. Let's select walls underscore capacitor 2. and set the local min and max sizes to 0.3 and 1 respectively. And keep the default value for growth rate. The main setting of this control type is the curvature normal angle. This angle is the maximum allowable angle between 0 and 180 degrees that one element edge is allowed to span for a particular curve. For example, a value of 10 would mean that a division will be made when the angle change along the curve is 10 degrees and therefore a 180 degree arc will be divided into approximately 18 segments. In this way, we can limit the number of elements that are generated along a curve or a curved surface if the minimum size is too small for that curve. Keep in mind that the default value of 18 degrees is sufficient and works for most of the cases. Smaller values should only be used in cases where the underlying geometry is highly curved such as the leading edge or trailing edge of fins. Lastly, we need to define the scope of this localized size control in the scope 2 field. We can localize the size control to faces, edges or faces and edges. Let's set the scope to faces and click on add local sizing. You can see that the curvature local sizing task is added to the workflow. Now let's create another local sizing for the walls underscore capacitor 1, we will keep the same local min and max sizes as before. However, 
Let's change the curvature normal angle to 20 for this one. We will keep the defaults for the generate the surface mesh task as we want to focus on local sizing in this video. Click on generate the surface mesh and fluent meshing will create the surface mesh based on these settings. Let's look at the generated surface mesh to see the effect of these local sizing. First, let's hide the enclosure, the inlet and the outlet surface and zoom into the capacitors to see the effect of curvature normal angle. For the capacitor on the left, a value of 10 degrees is used and as a result, we get approximately 36 mesh nodes around the circumference of the circle. On the other hand, for the cylinder on the right, a value of 20 results in approximately half as many elements along the circumference. Before we wrap up, let's quickly see the effect of different scoping options. Let's go back to the curvature size control for capacitor 1 and change the curvature normal angle to 10 and select edges under scope 2. This way, both the capacitors have the same local sizing settings except for the scoping. Here is the generated surface mesh. You can clearly see the effect of scoping the local sizing to edges compared to faces by comparing the surface meshes on the two capacitors. The local sizing is applied only at the edge of the face and the size of the elements increases while moving away from the edge where the sizing is being applied. So to summarize, in this video, we looked at the curvature size control, which allowed us to control the local sizing based on the underlying curvature through the curvature normal angle. We also understood curvature normal angle through a hands-on example. With that, we have come to the end of this video.